Hello and welcome to today's video slash review slash help for you. Um, you can probably find me on Instagram if you're in there, well you will find me on Instagram, at about a van. Um, I've been building vans for the last few years and my passion around building vans, are, or one of my main passions, is electrical systems as you might have seen if you already follow me there. Now in today's video I'm going to be reviewing, talking about this unit here which is a Victron Orion TR Smart 12 12 30. Now let's just walk through that. So it's a Victron Orion, which is the model. Smart means it's Bluetooth, and then we've got a 12 12 30. Now you'll select your model depending on your vehicle voltage or where the power is coming from and where it's going to. So you might be running like a Mercedes Vario or a big double decker bus which is on 24 volts. And if that's the case, Victron has the solution for you with this unit here. If you then want to run a 12 volt battery in your leisure system in the back, which is 12 volts, you need something to step it down from one voltage to another, and the Orion can do that for you. It can also do it the other way if you're running a 12 volt battery in the front, in your start batteries, and you want to go up to 24 volts for your main system, which some people like to. So this unit is really awesome. It's actually in my opinion, they're the best units you can buy as an engine charger for your vehicle. Um, let's go over two of the key differences between them, um, which is non-isolated or isolated. Now this is really specific to you and your build. What, how is your build, your system, your electrical system wired up within your van? Now. Some people might not be earthing their leisure batteries to the body. I would always recommend people do. Um, some people don't. They leave it as what's called a floating system. Now, if you're going to do that, you would want to run the isolated version. And the, there's only like two differences between the, sorry, one difference between the isolated and the non-isolated, and it's this at the bottom. Let's flip this over here so you can have a look. So on the isolated version, you're going to have four terminals here. Two would go off to negative and positive starter battery, your engine battery or your charging battery, and the other two would go off towards your leisure battery. So that is really the only difference between these. And like I said, if you're running a common earth, a common ground um, for everything to earth onto, so you're gonna put a nice big eight mil bolt into the chassis or the body of your vehicle and you're gonna connect your um, batteries earth to that on your leisure side, um, just check your engine battery, but it will always be earthed to the body as well. So in that case, you can use this unit, which is good news for you, because you're just about to save yourself around 65 pounds. Um, if you're not planning on earthing your vehicle, um, your leisure batteries to the body, um, or you're running them in a, in a separate place, or you're, um, they wouldn't run on the same earth, for some reason, um, obviously this is specific to each build, then you would go for the isolated version. But I would suggest if that's the case, you probably don't need to be watching this video right now. So, let, why is this unit here better? Why would you want to pay perhaps a little bit more money for the Victron unit? Now, in my opinion, build quality on Victron is amazing. Um, it's got a really nice big heat sink here on the back. Um, it's a pretty nice compact unit as well. Um, it doesn't have a ton of buttons here on the front. There's nothing to get confused with. So for, for most people, if you're just, this is your first time looking at battery to battery charger and you want to install it, there are just three wires here for you. Um, and then all you've got to do is, is connect it up, put your correct fuses it, fusing in, um, and then you're gonna open an app on your smartphone, the Victron Connect app, um, and you can walk through all the steps to set this up. Very, it's very intuitive, very easy to learn. Um, with something like the Sterling, it's not so easy to learn. There's um, a sequence to how you hold the buttons down and then you have to kind of select which battery you're gonna use and you have to leave the lights to flash off for 15 seconds and then on again. And it's, it's just not user friendly in my opinion for the majority of people. So I, um, I supplied these to one of my friends last year and she, she couldn't figure out why it wasn't charging her leisure battery. So she called me up, we just ran through the app and within about five minutes we had the problem solved over the phone. I didn't need to be there to walk her through holding buttons down and it was just very easy. Um, so that's one reason I like them. They're very intuitive, very user friendly. 
Um, second reason, build quality. I really can't fault them. I've never had a, vi a problem with a Victron item. Um, and the other, the other thing about these is the terminals. Um, Victron terminals really grip well to the cables and they don't like, it doesn't let it slip out. I've installed Sterling units before and they are very good, um, but you just have to be careful. These don't work as well on the Sterlings as they do on the Victrons. These really grip in um, and that would just be a worry if a, if a live is to come loose um, in transit or something like that. If you're fused, it's not a problem. It'll earth out the fuse blows and you don't have a problem. If you haven't uh, fused your system correctly and, and a wire, a live wire comes loose, you could really have big issues. So please, please, please make sure you're fusing your systems correctly. And you can either comment in the questions below, email me, find me on Instagram and ask me questions. I would rather anyone asks me questions than wires the system up incorrectly and starts a van fire. So please be safe when you're installing these units. And if you're really not comfortable and confident installing this yourself, please pay somebody um, who's competent and um, skilled to do so. Now, now we've covered why I think this is better. Oh, and the third reason is Bluetooth. Um, this will connect to other items within your system if you're using other Victron items. You can also monitor this on your phone. So you can see on your phone when the engine's running, how much power this is putting back, if it's working, if you need to troubleshoot it, you can again check everything on your phone. It's very, very user friendly. Now, you might be thinking, but I've seen, a, I've seen an engine charger for my camper van for £60 on eBay and it comes with the cable, why wouldn't I go for that? Now, I can definitely see that that's a valid question for a lot of people and it's one I get asked a lot, um, especially when people are on a budget building a van, they really do not want to go and spend £200. I would say this is a very, very good investment. If you're going to be driving, this is going to be providing you most likely more power than your solar panel on your van will in most situations. Um, especially through the winter, this is going to be kicking out more power. So it's definitely a worthwhile investment. The difference between a VSR, um, which they're usually about so big and they they usually come in a black colour. They've got one red wire that goes from your start battery through and then off to your leisure battery. And all they are is essentially a switch. They're really simple. They just monitor a voltage. Once your engine battery gets up to a certain voltage, they open up and it lets power go back to your leisure batteries. The difference between the two um, is quite big. Now, you can't use one of those chargers if you're running a newer vehicle. So if you're Euro 5 and upwards, the chances are your vehicle is fitted with a smart alternator. Now, the smart alternators often, the, the voltage does not get high enough to activate the split charge relay, the VSR, um, and you won't end up charging your batteries in the back efficiently. Um, the other thing that is, is becoming more and more prominent within the kind of van build community is people are switching to lithium batteries um, or they're just installing them from the beginning. So you can't, you, sh you can't use a VSR for lithium batteries. You would again need to use this. This item here can be programmed to various battery types. So if you're using a sealed battery, a gel battery, a lithium battery, this can do all of it and you don't need to worry. If you're on a budget right now and you're sticking in a cheap battery and then you think in two years when I've saved the money, I'm gonna upgrade to lithium, this is the one you wanna be sticking with. Otherwise, you're just throwing 80 pounds down the drain and you've still got to install this at a later stage. Um, you're also going to be getting more benefits from this in the short term because this acts like a proper charger for your vehicle, for your batteries. So what this does here is uh, it will monitor, monitor the battery voltage so it checks which state your batteries are at in the charge cycle and then it adapts appropriately. So vehicle, uh, batteries have different charge stages. Um, below 80% they need what's called a bulk charge. So you can put as much power as you want in or as much power specified by the manufacturer, not as much as you want, <laughs> you might start a fire. Um, but you, you're gonna put a large amount of power in on the bulk stages of a charge cycle. When you reach around 80%, it needs to go. It needs to be slowed down and restricted a little bit to, to help preserve your batteries, um, to keep them safe, stop them from overheating. Um, it needs to run through those charge cycles and then above that goes into something called absorption where it's just a very slow trickle charge until the battery is at 100%. Now this unit here can do that for you um, and it's gonna make sure that your batteries are fully charged um, 
in a in a good manner in a good way um, and you it's, it's just a very very effective unit of charging your batteries so I can highly recommend this now what you will notice on the bottom is I'm going to show you a little hack here you've got your terminals you take your cables and you're going to ram them in there and then when you get them in there you're going to notice that you've got a couple of strands here at the bottom and one might be flicking that way and then the other one will be flicking that way and potentially if you don't get those seated in there correctly these could end up shorting out on your negative terminal which is right there in the middle um, I'm not sure why manufacturers do that they always do it they put the negative in the middle and then positives either side so you've got an even greater risk of, of shorting one of those cables out but what you can use is a kit called a ferrule kit and I'm going to chuck that in the links in the description below to help you and what you do with those is you crimp them onto the end of the cable and it makes sure that all of those strands are, are close together you don't have any strays um, fl flicking out the sides so when you push that cable into the terminal here every single strand of wire for the positive is going to be inside the positive um, which means that you're, you're not going to have to deal with any loose loose wires flicking from a positive to a negative terminal so highly recommend that hack if you're going to be installing one of these um, let's just take a quick look at the manual here uh, which you get in the box um, it is going to give you a wiring diagram um, just here and if you flip forwards a couple of pages it's also going to give you the um, the fuse sizing and all the cable sizing depending on the run of your um, depending on the distance that you're going to keep this away from either battery so you might not know I'm just going to quickly cover this there's something called voltage drop um, which happens across all voltages but it's less prevalent at higher voltages um, at lower voltages to say 12 volts for example there's a, a larger voltage drop so the longer the run is, the longer the amount, the more, the more cable you need to use, the thicker you need to make that cable. Um, so make sure that you check this manual um, and that's going to tell you which size cable you need to use. Um, as an end note, you can actually buy these from me if you're in the UK. If you're not, unfortunately, you can't at the moment, but you can check out my Instagram. You can see that I'm passionate about electrics. I help a lot of people um, wire up their vans um, with technical support and advice on different components they can use um, if you're looking to um, size a system because you want to be in a certain climate at a certain time of year and you want to know if you can power all of your appliances I can help you with that and um, that's not a problem so again check the description below you'll find my email Instagram account please go and follow me um, if this has been a helpful video I would just ask you to leave a comment if there's any questions you have if there's something you found useful please comment please give it a thumbs up if you did like it if you didn't like it or you think I could have added something to the video again please comment and let me know if I can add something to future videos that help you out then that makes me happy too so thank you very much for following along with the journey and I hope this video has been helpful in helping you determine whether you need a battery to battery a VSR um, or a um, isolated or non-isolated charger. Thanks very much and have a great day.